Welcome back to the Hardware Games channel, everybody. I'm your host, Tony, and today we have someone very special, honorary Hardware Games member, and, well, you may know him from a few other venues as well. Impact Wrestling's John, capital letter E, period, Bravo, formerly TNA Wrestling. That's right. So we have a couple of different things to showcase today. First off, we have ECW Hardcore Revolution and a pre-alpha, very early version of this game. A show. lot of differences, Tony, a lot of similarities. We're gonna get into it today. And we have a little bonus game at the end, WWF No Mercy for the N64. Might I say some people regard that game as the greatest wrestling game ever made. Currently today in 2022, we're gonna get into that as well. That's right. And we have a version of that game that is a couple months shy of release. So it does have some differences as well. And you provided us a little, little, little bonus. I did. Bonus. Tommy Dreamer, one of the founding fathers of ECW, was nice enough to do an interview with me. I work with him at Impact Wrestling. We did a quick little interview about the making of this game, some fun facts you may not know, and which company almost got the ECW license other than Acclaim. We'll find out today. Let's get started. So this is the retail version of the ECW game. For those not familiar, can you explain to us what the ECW is? ECW was the alternative product back in the day. They prided themselves on violence, uh, more mature audience. WWE Attitude, for those of your viewers that are wrestling fans know what that is. ECW was WWE Attitude before WWE Attitude was a thing. They were actually ahead of their time, Tony. Yeah, so this is actually the first wrestling game to be rated M for mature. Yeah because they had barbed wire matches, they had blood, uh, they had a lot of extra violence, so they knew what they were doing. They were marketing to a more mature audience because a lot of the children had grown up and wanted more mature product. There's Sabu, he was one of my favorites growing up. He's actually from Michigan. Really, okay. Yeah. They just did a show with him a couple of years ago and he actually knew my name was Bravo and I was like, wow, Sabu actually knows who I am. <laughs> Mind blowing. That's awesome. And your childhood heroes know who you are. Oh my God. That song, Tony, is very iconic to anybody watching this right now that loves ECW. It's a yeah. very iconic song. They used to use uh, like like Rob Zombie and Alice in Change for Tommy Dreamer, and uh, they used to do it till they had a cease and desist, and then once they got the cease and desist, they'd move on and pick another song. But it was the <laughs> 90s. It was the Wild West. They did what they wanted. That's why people loved them. So we're going to showcase a little bit more of the retail version of the game so you guys can get to know it before we talk about the differences with the pre-alpha build. Before we do that, I'm going to get to some of the people I work with. Tommy Dreamer, he helped apparently cut the deal for this game. He told us that in the interview, which you'll see later. Uh, Rhino, who's from Michigan, he currently lives in Monroe, Michigan, but uh, from the mean streets of Dearborn growing up. Uh, Sabu, also from Michigan. I believe Lance Storm is in this game as well. I work with him at Impact Wrestling. He's an agent slash producer. So this is like everyone you work with currently. Younger. Yes, 20 <laughs> years ago. Oh, here it is. Listen to the music, Tony. <laughs> Sounds very much like Alice in Chains. Oh, yeah. But it's not Alice in Chains because they can't use the license. Allison Chains is aware that Tommy Dreamer is his, their walk-up musical. I just had a conversation with him about that. I'll have to do that interview. <laughs> Said, at what time did Allison Chains know that you were using their music? Were they unhappy or were they? They were, they were very happy. <laughs> Tommy told me the whole story about how he met him the first time and they, they were aware of it. That's hilarious. One of the first things I'm noticing, Tony, in this intro was uh, anybody that played any prior WWE Warzone or WWE Attitude games, this game seems very similar. Yes. This game was built on the back of Attitude, which is a game that came out a year prior. That was a 1999 game. This is a copyright year 2000 yeah. game. And I remember playing this back in the day and feeling like it was the same game with just a fresh coat of paint. And I think later when we get into the differences, maybe we'll see uh, some confirmation of that. Yes, more confirmation than you might want to see. It's true. And had this been the modern era, this would have eventually been like DLC. This would have been downloadable content. Yeah. Because it didn't change that much at all. All right, we finally got it. We figured out how to do the barbed wire match. Look at that, Tony. Yeah. We'll have to check and see if the barbed wire is an option in the, pro yeah. <laughs> in the prototype version now. Not super obvious, but it's there. And this was a big, big deal at the time. And this is one of the major reasons it was end for mature. Because uh, barbed wire match, for those of you not familiar, they take the ropes down and they put barbed wire up instead. And guys bleed. His arms oh, bleed. Yeah, his arms bleeding now, yeah. Oh yeah, that's He's, a lot of blood. Yeah. I know like people are probably watching this, but like you call that blood, no, but for the time, <laughs> that was a big deal. Yeah. Now his uh you know, Angel's feet are gonna bleed. <laughs> He's right on top of the damn barbed wire. I like how their their interaction 
uh, with it isn't much different. Like, they're not, like, afraid to go near it or yeah. anything like that. They're not, like, actively avoiding it. It's all the same. It's just that it makes you bleed. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm sure they had pressure on them to keep it violent, but also, oh, there he goes, he hit it. Yeah. But also not so violent that people wouldn't, that yeah. parents wouldn't pick it up for their kids and such. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Tony, now we're going to get into the pre-alpha version of the game. There's a ton of difference on here that you mm -hmm. pointed out to me. Uh, what do you think about it? There's a lot to cover. <laughs> There's a lot of strange things in here. Tony's drinking again, so you know that's a great sign. I need to drink for this. Yes, let's get into it. All right, so we have the prototype on the left, the retail on the right. You could see on the prototype, it says 1999 versus the year 2000. Acclaim Sports as opposed to regular claim right off exactly. the bat. Let's see what we got going on here, Tony. Here's where it gets weird. Here we go. Stop. <laughs> Look, Tony, they didn't even try it. It's, it's the WWE Attitude Engine right off the bat. This is, oh, yeah. This is the ECW game. Now, this was built off the back of Attitude, and you can tell, like, in the prototype version, <laughs> they still had the original intro. Well, in they it. probably figured, obviously, they'd change it later, so they didn't even worry about it. But this confirms what we thought two decades ago. Yep. We all thought we were playing the same game, and it doesn't get more proof in the pudding than oh, this. Oh, yes, exactly. Well, if you take a look at the game in a hex editor, it actually says uh, WWF 7. I'm, I'm not sure what the significance of the 7 is, but maybe it's the seventh game they made for the WWF or whatever. Go, yeah, here we go. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it, it truly is truly is the same game. Here's the loading screen, just a little bit different layout Slightly here. different. And also faster in the retail version, you'll notice. Yeah, absolutely. And here is the start up S menu. Screens are different yeah, too. Yeah, screens are different. Not significant, but different. Yeah, I like the one on the left better personally, but I, I see why they did the one on the right. Pretty much all of the menus look a little bit different. You know, we're in the utilities menu and no pun intended, it looks a little more utilitarian mm -hmm. <laughs> in the prototype pre-release version compared to retail, but you're gonna kind of see that throughout. There's a little more design yeah. implemented. Well, I'm sure every video game has very bland menus until they get to retail and they spruce it up to keep our attention. Exactly. All right, so here we're going into an exhibition match. We're gonna honor Sir Dreamer yes. over here. Why not? Yep. And we're just gonna showcase the difference between the retail version and the pre-release version, how they introduce the wrestlers. So you're gonna see the Tommy Dreamer here. He has an introduction to the ring. Yeah. Uh, we're still loading here and then boom. There's no introduction on yep, that. Yeah, we're right to the ring. I don't know if Tommy Dreamer ever had fireworks to my recollection in ECW. Fireworks are very expensive production costs. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please correct me out there in the interweb land. But it's interesting that they didn't even... What is going on with that? With that? <laughs> what is going on there, Tony? Hmm, don't know. The textures are glitching out. It looks like it's, it's searching for something that doesn't exist. <laughs> for a second, I thought it was the WWF neon wall that they used to walk out in the 90s. But that's, yeah. that's a glitch, yeah. clearly. If you die from uh, bleeding out from barbed wire, that's where you oh go. Oh my god! Or at it's least a, get a seizure just yeah, from looking at yeah, it. Yeah. So be careful if you if you're uh, sensitive. They to probably were. Or... They probably were making and go. Okay, it's glitching, but we'll get back to it. Just make sure the yeah. end game engine is actually working. It's clearly the same game as, as WWE. So they, they they probably were just making sure that they had the basics down before they get all the details. Yeah. Now this is so funny with Don Marie here. She does a little shimmy. And it's supposed to be kind of like sexy, yeah. right? And you can clearly tell it's a guy doing motion capture, too, right? <laughs> trying to be a woman. I, yeah, could be, exactly. I could be wrong again, but it just—it looks like it's a. I wouldn't be shocked. It if looks it's like a, guy a dude because it's like, look at me. Yeah, I'm it's a it's girl. a guy trying to be a woman. Yeah, it's it's like not how a woman walks. Sure. <laughs> like even a woman uh, trying to be sexualized or sexy. Yeah. That's not how a woman walks. But check this out. Look, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hot, Tony. 1999. Lock the door, Mom. I'm playing ECW. Rated oh M for God. Mature. Yeah. My, honestly, though, my uh, very religious mother would have thrown a fit if she would have seen I could not have played this in either front of my, either of my parents. They were very Catholic, very religious. Yeah, same same here. She would have blocked the TV with her body. Yeah. So, so I would not have seen that sinful, pixelated cry. My mom would have said, you're discontinuing your wrestling career. You're not going to pursue this industry. <laughs> Stop right now. Damn it, Don Marie. All right, so here we have all of the playable characters, pre-release version you're seeing here. Uh, we have our featured list, and then we're gonna have our jobber list, which are sort of them filling in the blanks, yeah. I guess? I feel they had a limited amount of time to put actual wrestlers in the game, so they just made their own wrestlers off their own volition, almost like they did their own creative player, just to, like you said, round the list out, so they had some substance to the game, since it was it was on a time limit. Yeah, and you can tell by the names of these characters. Uh, also, if you take a look at the custom list, that's what you would create as the player. Sure. Right. 
And then here we're gonna take a look at the retail version. And we have the same featured list, but the, the jobber list is much more minimized. They probably did that because they knew when people got at home, if it was filled up with the, all these jobbers, people would have already seen through the facade that already was this game. <laughs> uh, I, I know if I would have had like 10, 15 jobbers, I'd have been mad. And I know you got to save stuff for the sequel, but that, that, that was in the, in the pre-off, it's too much. So here we have an instance where the voices don't quite match up. I am 100% your American meaty woman. Someone's gonna have to clean you off the mat with a sponge! So here we have another example of sort of a similar instance. Uh, we have Rhino versus Tommy Rich, but this doesn't look very hey, much wait, like Rhino. Hey, wait, that's not Rhino. <laughs> Men are like lost little pigs. Just begging for some hard discipline. I'll call him right now and tell him he's not in the pre-alpha game. Does he know that? Uh, I don't I don't know. You should let him know. I should let Send him Send him know. a message right now. Yeah, so obviously, like, for whatever reason, whenever you pick Rhino, it just gives you a different character. <laughs> Maybe his build wasn't done yet. It just wasn't done. Here is the pay-per-view mode in the pre-release version. It's... A lot of these aren't really selectable, but if we scroll over to the, the retail version of the game, it's, it's obviously much more uh, filled out here. Well, yeah. So here we have the edit a stadium menu. And as you can see, many of the ring apron and entrance sign, a scaffold banner. All of it. It's all WWF Attitude Era. Yes. Which is unbelievable because if I just spent $60 plus tax, I'm not happy right now. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's the same thing. Truly, truly built upon the previous game. No denying it. Strangely, though, the retail version is a lot less visual. The other menus had more flair yeah. in the retail version of the game and mo were more utilitarian yeah. in the pre-alpha, whereas the opposite here. I, I feel like when we talk to Tommy Dreamer, he says something to the effect of me he, privately that they were saving stuff for the next game. I think they were hoping the next game would be bigger and better, but history did not dictate that. Yeah. Before we go to No Mercy and wrap this up, you have a little interview for I us. I do have a Hard for Games exclusive, a little interview I did in Nashville, Tennessee after uh, Impact Wrestling Victory Road with Tommy Dreamer. Tommy had a lot to do with the development and the deal of this game right here. A lot of people don't know that. He has a lot of interesting stories, fun facts that are coming up for the first time. Hard for Games exclusive. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, ECW founding father Tommy Dreamer. We are talking about ECW Hardcore Revolution, the video game. A lot of people might not know this, but Tommy Dreamer had a hand in help making it. And it was his first ever video game he was in and not just the creative player. Tommy, you want to tell the fans at home a little something about it? It was an amazing time in the wrestling industry. Video games were key for your success as a wrestling company. And we had a lot of companies bidding for that game. And I'm gonna tell you an interesting fact that I have said, but I don't know if a lot of people uh, realize this. The original ECW game, there was a fan who was worked for this company and they were like, man, we want this ECW game to be our number two behind this other game. And it's revolutionary, it's a perfect fit for ECW. And they met, they all came to ECW Arena Show, and this one guy was such a big fan, and all this stuff was supposed to happen. They go, we just need our one game to hit. And if that game hits, you will be our next game. And we could not wait due to financial reasons, because Acclaim had lost the license for WWE. Mm -hmm. So now they offered us money. They offered us money on the back end as opposed to the front end. Okay. But that other game that if, if it hit, we were gonna take off, and that game and that franchise was Grand Theft Auto. Oh, no kidding, I don't And if that. you think about how ECW would have fit that mm -hmm. whole genre, and that guy was Kevin Gill, who worked there. He was a big ECW fan. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to UKG. And uh, didn't happen, but now we're talking about the Acclaim game. Uh, it was awesome to be in a video game. I'm a big gamer myself. I play every sports game, and of course, back then, every wrestling game, and there was a lot of promises made. My good friend, Mike Archer, was a big part of putting that whole game together and made the deal work. The caveat was they had to get a game out. And the second game was gonna be the big one. But that first game was the same engine of the WWE's version. So you basically saw 
all the ECW stars with um, kind of from that old WWE sure. game. It wasn't, I feel, received as well as it could be. And then that second game was supposed to be the marquee game. It did come out, but then now the company's on its decline. Yeah, that's which a, sucked. That that is that is unfortunate. I was hot because I put a lot of this together, which not a lot of people know. So you're hearing it from the metaphoric horse's mouth right now. And I mean, there's also there's recent pictures online of all of us standing there like this that were told they would never reserve, they would never be out there because they were, and like the women were out of like out of character. And just staying there because this was supposed to be for your shot. So this wasn't where they had the computer generation thing. They would look at your hands. And like for me, I had to show my hands for my wrist tape. Mm -hmm. And everyone's just standing like this. And recently those pictures have surfaced on the internet. And all my hatred came right back when I saw that. Because someone who told me they would never see the light of day. Ah, here it is 20 some years Sons later. Tommy, lastly, uh, Desert Island, you can take one video game system. Which one is it? I'm making you yeah. choose. Why can you choose? Anything you from Madden. I was a massive N64 yeah, guy. Everybody was. Uh, that WCW, NWO Revenge game, uh, the THQ game was, oh, those good. was awesome. Um, I'm a big entrance guy. I'm also a very big PlayStation person. I've Listen, I'm old, ladies and gentlemen. I've had every video game system. I've had Atari, Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Intellivision, ColecoVision, Nintendo. You name it, I had it. I currently have a PS4, and I buy every Madden, every uh, MLB The Show, NBA, and uh, I kind of got out of the hockey genre just because it became like I was playing real hockey as opposed to I just want to press a button, shoot, score, pass, and then fight. Make it simple. We play the steel. Yes, all oh, great game. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I had one system, I would go with my PlayStation 4 because okay. I love the graphics. I get, because sometimes if you go throwback games, like it's cool, but then you realize how far the graphics yeah, you get are. And now listen, I know I said lastly, but I have to ask no, you one more question. Right. How did it feel being in your first ever video game for Hardcore Revolution, as opposed to like, we all sit at home, we create ourselves on the game. You were actually in the game, non-creative player. Try to tell the people at home how that felt since you were such a big gamer. If uh, you could ever, Someone who's a game or if you could ever visualize, like there's a lot of times where I say, this has been my dream. And you don't realize like, hey, you can go to a store and you have an action figure, or then you're in a video game. It's next level. Um, it's also like if you're on the cover or the back cover, it's something that you appreciate, I feel, as I got older, because back then it was just, what's next, what's next for the growth of ECW. But, I've had a blessed career, and I've also been blessed to have things like that. I do have the box nicely displayed at my home because cool. it's something called pride. And just like my first ever action figure, it's things I never thought I would achieve, but with life and hard work, you can achieve anything. And being in your first video game, absolutely. I bought that action figure at Toys R Us. Uh, we work at Impact Wrestling. I'm John Capital, letter E period, Bravo. This is Tommy German. Maybe Impact will get a video game someday. Never say never. It's the wrestling business. Hard for games, back to you. So Tommy uh, hadn't told me previously before we did the interview, but it, it the the acclaim license went to ECW, but ECW almost landing Rockstar could have changed it drastically. Rockstar probably would have put more effort than acclaim did, and who knows what would happen to ECW yeah. or the video game industry when it comes to wrestling games. Yeah, that's like it's so it makes me it makes me think because I was thinking about this after I, I saw the the footage, and it was like. It probably would have been obviously a totally different game, probably a better game if it was under the Rockstar banner, but at the same time, could ECW have survived long enough to wait I for think, that? I think that was like, the key. I think it was, they had, like he said, they needed money and they just went with the first bidder. Think about it, Rockstar doing Grand Theft Auto being all about sex and violence, which is what ECW is about. Uh, it Literally, they would have catered and they would have went well together. And who yeah. knows, there could have been a crossover. You never know, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a huge what if and it, you're here, you heard it here right here yeah. hard for games first or maybe ecw would have went under by the time rockstar could have even produced a game and we would have gotten no ecw there's game at there's all. no so just, there's no telling it's like it's so funky to think about the different possibilities with these different developers and organizations and stuff and yeah so that said let's move on to our bonus game which is no mercy for the n64 we're going to talk a little bit about the retail version and then we're going to go ahead and showcase some of the minor differences in this case between the versions that we have take it away also, too, I want to hear from some of your viewers out there. Uh, I used to play this game 
create a wrestler, I would make everybody and anybody that I possibly could. If 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 there was a glitch in this game where it would crash your cartridge, all your memory would be wiped. Um, if you did two creative players versus each other, did anybody out there experience this as well? Because I certainly did, and uh, I ended up selling the game because I did not like the fact that I spent all this time on it, and it did not matter. As the rocks say, it doesn't matter because all my creative players that I spent the month on, it just completely went away. So if you yeah. had that glitch, please sound off. I want to hear your experiences. Yeah. Let's see if I remember how to do the special, Tony. <laughs> see, it comes right back to your muscle memory, baby. Rock bottom. Nice. It's going to be so strange playing a game where you're like playing a, a character that you know and love from television and then suddenly you're working with them or you meet well, them or whatever. You know? That's an actual fact because I used to work at Toys R Us for 20 some years before it closed down and I used to collect wrestling action figures and yeah. then when these people that I collected became my co-workers it got weird so I ended up selling them all <laughs> and it was it was a good thing too because like, like I would play this game and then once all these people became my co-workers I stopped playing the video game as much and I started concentrating on my actual life career because I realized that if I sat at home and just played this game all day, I would never actually get anywhere in actual real wrestling. So it might be mm. a good thing that this game glitched. It might have been a, <laughs> it might have been a turning point in my career this where I realized I had to stop, put the controller down and actually spend the next couple of years actually pursuing my dreams. Focus on training. Yes. I tell that to the kids all the time. I see them at the people I train. I see them uh, playing PS5 and I go, Put it down and get to the gym. Rock bottom number two. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Gerald Briscoe. Sure, all your viewers are very happy that we're playing with Gerald Briscoe. Wait. Once again, minimal slowdown for four guys being in the ring. And this makes a great game, Tony. The fact that I can just pick up... I haven't played this game in probably 18 years. Yeah. And the fact that I can still play, like... We touched on it earlier. It's, it's all muscle memory, right? Yeah. I struggled with the Acclaim game. I was getting my butt kicked. And this one, I'm doing pretty good. That is the mark of a good... It shows you that gameplay is everything yeah. with a video game. It's intuitive, and your brain remembered it, like, 20 years later. Yeah, you it's, know. it's so simple, but it's, it's not so simple that it's boring. Yeah. There you go. Did I tell you I'd win? There we go. What did I say? Done. This, this is clearly not vodka, everyone. This is water. <laughs> but we'll just say it's vodka. Serious, yes. I'm a winner. Oh, wait. What's coming on? Oh! What did you get me into, Tony V? <laughs> the match isn't over? All right. So jumping into the pre-release, slightly pre-release, No Mercy game, we're going to notice some... Slight differences. They're mostly cosmetic. Yeah, not many, not many differences here because I think THQ had their had their stuff together more than Acclaim. I could be wrong on that, but so one of the differences is with Kane, and you're going to notice a slightly zoomed in. Oh yeah, definitely. Look at that. Yep. And you're going to notice in-game fireworks versus cinematic yeah. fireworks. Yep, so here we go again, different arena, and each time Kane has fireworks versus just cutting to a cinema with those fireworks. Different camera angles, different lighting, different like lights that are placed on screen. It's very subtle differences just kind of sprinkled throughout. Yeah. It's nothing so significant. And again, this was only a couple months out or a month or so out from the retail build. This is kind of what you would expect more or less. Obviously you'd hope a game would be nearly finished sure. before launch. <laughs> again, very just sort of cosmetic-y. Sure. Just sort of tweaks, last minute tweaks, that kind of thing. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode today. John E. Bravo. John capital letter E. Capital e. Bravo. e. Bravo. Trademarked by the U.S. government. That's right. God damn it. Finally. Yep. There you go. <laughs> you did it. You yes. Did it. it only took me 22 years, Tony. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, thank you so much for coming. I'm You're so welcome. glad that you could Anytime. I have future like... goals. We plan on getting Tommy Dreamer in studio for yes. Hard for Games. Yes. I'm going to make that happen someday. Just be patient with me. This one is years in the making. That one might be too, but it will happen. Trust <laughs> yes. me. And of course, obviously, 
obviously a big thank you to Tommy Dreamer for taking the time out of his day to chat about this game, like talk about the history with it, like really appreciate that exclusive. And I gotta do this so one cool. time for those that know, EC Dub, EC Dub, <laughs> EC Dub. Tommy would be very proud right now. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see y'all next time. Cheers, take care. Yeah.